Here I'm going to go through, once you've drawn a Lewis structure, what information you can derive from that Lewis structure. And so, here I've got three Lewis structures. This is a carbon tetrachloride. So we have CCl4, we have H2O water, and we have iodine pentafluoride. And I'm going to go through and look at what things can I tell just by looking at the Lewis structure. Now, one of the very first things that you want to note is that we're really concerned with the central atom in all of these, and usually less concerned with the things around it. We want to know how many things are attached, but the electron pairs on the chlorine are going to be less important than how many things are attached to the carbon. So I'm looking mostly at the carbon, the oxygen, and the iodine here, as opposed to the things around them. Now, from this Lewis structure, the first thing you can tell is by how many bonds are made between, a, between the central atom and another thing, and a double bond or triple bond is going to count as one thing here, as, as how many bonds there are as well as how many lone pairs of electrons are on the central atom, I can tell the hybridization. So in order to get four sets of electronic structures around a carbon, uh, you're going to hybridize three different orbitals from the P and one with the S to give you those four hybrid orbitals, allowing you to make four bonds. So you'll end up with sp3. Now a short way to do this is how many things are attached to your central atom will be how many letters there are. So here I have one S and then three P's for my four bonds of things that are attached. Okay. The second thing you can tell from this is what the shape of the molecule is. So in this one I have four things attached to a central atom. And so you may have seen something to the effect of a of an X configuration where you're looking at X being the number of things attached and then E's being the number of lone pairs on the central atom. There are no lone pairs on the carbon here. So this is going to be a tetrahedral shape and anytime you have four things attached to a central atom and no lone pairs, you'll have a tetrahedral shape. Along with the shape will be the bond angle. So for anything in the tetrahedral geometry, whether it's tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent, those are going to have bond angles that are that odd one, the 109.5. Although as you progress down, you'll get a little bit closer, 107, 105 range. Uh, and then after that, I can actually start to look at whether this thing has polar bonds. And so carbon and chlorine have a different enough electronegativity that I'm going to shift electron density away from the carbon towards the chlorine. So yes, that will have polar bonds. Then I can ask if this is a polar molecule, and that includes whether or not it has polar bonds, as well as the symmetry of the molecule. So this is a very symmetrical molecule, not because of the cross-like structure here in the 2D Lewis structure, but in the tetrahedral 3D image of this molecule, there's going to be a chlorine no matter where you come from. And so this is not a polar molecule, because it is too symmetrical, all of its dipole moments cancel, and there's no positive and negative end. There are only negative ends to this molecule. Okay, So that's most of the information that you can derive from a Lewis structure, although it's a lot of things. If we then go to the second one here, this time I have two things attached and then I have two lone pairs. Okay, So, so each of those lone pairs counts as a thing just as we did in the past. So for the hybridization here, I'm still in an sp3 hybridization. So again, we've got one, two, three, four things, and so we have four letters sp3. For the shape, we're looking at a tetrahedral base shape, but we only have two atoms attached. And so this is going to be the bent or bent triatomic shape. But what's important to note is that that Lewis structure there indicates a straight line, and that is not true. This is going to be at an angle of about 105 degrees. Okay. So for our X configuration here, we're looking at AX2, E2. And then for our bond angle, uh, here we would have the 109.5, but it's going to be a little more constrained than that, so we're looking around 104.5 or 105, and we would have to check what the specific atoms come out to for, the, for this particular thing, but somewhere in that vicinity would be fine. For the polar bonds, yes, absolutely. Oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. Electron density shifts towards it. And then for the polar molecule, this is also polar because this is not symmetrical. So when we look at this, even though this is drawn as a line, in real life it's going to be a lot more bent, as the shape would indicate. Um, so if we were to actually draw the molecule, we would have a big oxygen atom and then two hydrogen atoms like this. So we can have a negative charge on this side and a positive charge on that side. 
So we end up with a polar molecule because of that asymmetry with respect to this line right here. The hydrogen's on this side of it, the oxygen on the other. Okay? And then the last one here, the iodine pentafluoride, a little bit trickier Lewis structure. Now, the hybridization on this uh, would come out to be sp3d2, however, uh, there's been some discrepancies with whether or not that's actually accurate or not, and I believe it is not accurate, uh, but we can leave it up for communication purposes. The shape of this, there's six things attached here, so we're looking at an AX5E, so we're in the octahedral set of shapes, so we're looking at octahedral, square pyramidal, and square planar. This one would be square pyramidal, so we have our square here, our lone pair, and then our pyramid down here. Square pyramidal. The bond angles, most of our bond angles here are going to be 90 degrees, but from here to here and from here to here would be 180. Okay. Are there polar bonds on this thing? Yes, absolutely. Fluorine is much more electronegative than iodine. And is this a polar molecule? Yes. So we have polar bonds, and then because of that lone pair, that's going to be an asymmetrical molecule. So I can have a positive end up here by the iodine lone pair. And then I have a negative end down by this fluorine over here. Uh, and so that would be a polar molecule. Now, if we go back from the polar molecules, we'll know what type of intermolecular forces there are. So this will be dispersion only. This one will be dipole, but it's oxygen and hydrogen. So it's the exceptionally strong dipole known as hydrogen bonding. And then here we have polar molecules. Uh, no hydrogen present, so this would be dipole-dipole interaction. Okay, so really at the beginning of Lewis structures you want to understand that this is a 2D flat image of something that's 3D, so there are limitations to how much information you can derive from it, but you can see here that there's a lot of information I can figure out just by how many things are attached and how many of them are lone pairs and how many of them are atoms. Uh, and from there we can get a lot of different things. Obviously, it's taken into consideration the fact that these are the actual shapes of these and not these, and not to get confused and think that this is linear.